Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it is time for another daily sketch. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying something new with my filming. Uh, so let me know what you think about that. And uh, yeah, so this is gonna be a pretty simple drawing video. Just gonna draw a creature for today. And it's not gonna be a super long one. Um, just gonna draw something real simple and fun. Uh, I love drawing creatures. It's one of my favorite things to do as far as just enjoying the process of drawing. Um, I, you guys have probably seen me do these a million times, but it's one of those things where I don't have to put a lot of thought. I just make shapes and see kind of what that turns into. Um, and hopefully it turns into something cool. Let's, uh, and this one, yeah. Got like, ooh, I could do, yeah, like a jaw thing. This kind of looks like it's coming out right here, forward a little bit. Uh, give it, see my natural instinct would be, so I've got a couple of these weird little round things. Let's give it some kind of asymmetrical horns that kind of come out in random places. That's kind of cool. Eyes could be over here on the outside. Let's do that. This is like a nose section maybe. So as you can see, this is a really like, I mean, I don't know what this thing is gonna look like when I start. That's one of the reasons also that I love drawing like this. Let's give it a big ass jawline. Huge jaw that kind of comes up, fits right in there like that. Have some teeth that kind of swoop around this outside. Some ears that hang real low on its face. That's kind of cool. Teeth right here. It's kind of interesting. Let's show up this nose a little bit. Darken that in. I'm using purple big pen. You guys have been watching my videos. You know I've been using red for the last couple. Thought I'd mix things up. Um, I like purple. Just uh, it's a lot more contrasty than the red. The problem with purple a little bit is um, that it is more contrasty. So the lines, the little sketch lines, show up a bit more. Um, so it's a little bit harder to hide stuff. Uh, to hide all those little, you know, structure lines and everything. Um, but since it is a little darker, you know, I can go pretty dark with it and kind of looks a little bit sad. Let's see here. Is this a tongue? Form like this. Let's give him a, a neck. Kind of comes over to this side. Actually, no, let's go like that. I'm gonna really focus on the head. That way I don't take too long on this drawing. You guys can kind of see it come to life. Start adding in some shading. Actually, before I do that, so I kind of got a basic form here. I'm gonna do a t some sharp tooth teeth that kind of come in like this. And for the bottom, I'm doing all, I'm gonna do a really rounded bottom bottom mandible section. Sharp teeth. Maybe this bottom mandible kind of actually comes out so we can pull stuff in with it. That'd be kind of cool. Not super far, but these lines over here just show the stretchiness of maybe it. Kind of like a Rancor, actually, from Star Wars a little bit. It's 
kind of cool. Let's have the jaw really tuck under the eyes over on the side over here. I'll give it some, like, instead of having really high uh, brow bones, which it'll have those as well. I always like high brow bones. Um, has a really indented eye socket due to these lower brow bones. Now let's take this purple. This goes really well with um, the purple big pin. And I'm gonna just block in some, some shadowed areas here. Really just define this thing super quickly. The inside of the mouth is gonna be really dark, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now um, because I know I wanna go darker than I am with this. These are just my shadows. So I only want these on kind of like the more outside areas. If I know I'm gonna go really dark on something, I won't bother wasting the ink on shading it. This side of the face. We'll have the light kind of coming straight down on this one instead of at an angle. Um, so everything, that'll help us really define these shelves, these like areas that are blocked by light. And sometimes I will add stuff in with the marker, which actually looks super cool. Um, in fact, I should do that a bit more than I do um, because it's just a different texture. It's like a smooth marker texture, which I feel like anytime you can mix things up with your textures, it just adds cool interest to the drawing. Get this lower part of the ear. Obviously his neck is gonna be all in shadow because of his head is blocking all the light kind of coming to it. Um, uh, like I said, you know, I, I plan on continuing these daily sketch videos uh, until I just can't do it. I did take a break on the weekends. It's hard for me to do these because like this last weekend, both my daughters had soccer games. Um, we're just super busy. I don't even have a, hardly any time to sit down and draw. Uh, we'll see though. I mean, one nice thing about the weekends is I can include my daughter, um, both of my daughters, because at least they don't have school, which a lot of these videos I do at night, um, just because I have more time not working or anything. So um, most of the time I film them, film them the night before I start drawing, get these horns flushed out lines coming through here I think it's kind of cool looking creepy Let's really make this lower mandible kind of stick out like that I've wanted to do this uh, where you can actually watch me draw for a while too because I do think that in today's modern age one thing I've always wanted people to understand is that like I draw with from imagination it's my favorite way to draw just pulling things from my mind I think reference is ultra important especially for learning but for me like drawing from imagination is so free and just so like fun um, it's kind of my thing it always has been and so when I get better at art really how I gauge that is how well I can draw from my mind because this is my most enjoyable way of drawing. Um, and I know a lot of artists don't, and I don't have a problem with that, but it is kind of my thing. Uh, a lot of artists that you see do realistic stuff, um, they're using projectors or mirrors now. Mirror, there's, if I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there's a lot of cool like cell phone things that you can um, hook onto your, uh, use your phone and basically it like, you look kind of directly above your drawing and it transfers the image onto the paper through the mirror that you're looking through, but nobody can see it. So you're gonna see stuff like that become way more um, popular on YouTube because it just, 
you could trace stuff and people, you know, watching you would never know. Um, again, to each their own as far as like, as long as you're making art that you really enjoy and are proud of, then make the art you want to make. But for me, uh, it's kind of my stick to why I practice and get better is so I can do, um, draw from my imagination more. So yeah, I think I'm going to do extra nostrils. So he's going to have four nostrils. I think that'll break up this midsection a little bit too. It might be kind of cool. Yeah, that is kind of cool. I like the way that looks. Let's really darken around the eyes. Um, so having said that, you know, like, so me filming this way really shows you that it's just me. I'm not looking at anything. All I'm seeing is the paper in front of me and seeing what I can pull from that paper. Um, again, I don't encourage you guys to do this when you're practicing. This is a really, or you're trying to do something very specific, or even if you just want to make a really good artwork. Um, I always feel like if I reference a lot more, I could actually make cooler stuff. Uh, it's, it's amazing way to draw. You, you should make the art you want to make and things like that. So this is just something I'm choosing to do for this video. So, um, and actually I choose to do for most of my artwork. I just like drawing this way. I like seeing what I can pull from my mind. So I think it's important for me to have two cameras filming. So you guys can actually see like, oh yeah, you know, it is what I'm seeing. Okay, let's grab a darker purple and do the back of his mouth. This is gonna really, I think, help. Let's add some real dark darks in here. Help give this thing some contrast because I feel like it's lacking some pop right now. Um, and so the thing is, I watched a video the other day, which I should start linking some of the videos I find. And it's this artist who I followed on YouTube. I love his style. He's just got beautiful paintings and he uses a projector. Um, but he's a real artist. He uses that as a tool. There's no way you could duplicate what he does, but he does it because it saves time. And I'm a designer, but for a living, anything that makes you more efficient to where you can make money faster and easier um, is always a good idea, especially when your goal is to make money. Uh, efficiency is super important. Uh, it means you can produce more work. There's all kinds of benefits to it. So I definitely, like I said, don't knock it, especially if I just see a piece of artwork and I absolutely love it. Um, I don't care how it was made. Like, you know, I mean, I feel like you can tell who a really good artist is, no matter what tools they use. And if somebody's not super good uh, and they're just using tricks and cheats, you can see that too. So, um, you know, I mean, it's not something that super concerns me at all. Uh, and I think it's a lot of people were kind of jumping on him saying, hey, that's that's cheating. And he even mentions in the video, like, the old masters did this. All the people you look up to, Da Vinci, all these guys, uh, used Mirror Obscura and things like that. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's not my thing. Like I said, I think the most enjoyable. But if I ever did come across a technique like that and it allowed me to make a piece of artwork that I really want to make, then sure, I would totally use it. Right here I'm doing uh, kind of little warts just to give his skin a little bit of texture. So, but I don't know. I mean, it's just something to think about as an artist. And also your views as an artist are always changing. Uh, I know my, like how, what I thought about art when I was younger is completely different than what I, how I perceive things now, um, which is how we all should be. If you're staying in the same mindset you had when you were 20 and you're now 40 or 30, um, you should question question things a little bit because most people don't got things figured out when they're in their 20s. I definitely didn't. I, yeah.
Yeah, this has definitely got Rancor vibes on it. I'm gonna give him some black horns. I feel like this drawing definitely needs a bit more contrast. Let's give these horns up here, let's make them black. And then I can add highlights with my jelly roller pin. That horn's a little too thick, or thin, I mean. Yeah, that'll be good. Let's give him a few more off this side. I mean, these are defensive tools, so maybe if he's fighting another one of his kind, they can't just chomp his head. Let's give him one right off the middle of his chin. Kind of cool. Not 100% sure what I want to do with his eyes yet. I think I might make him black and then add a couple of little highlights right through the middle. Let's do that. Let's see what it looks like. Not bad. But again, getting back to what I was kind of talking about, this is something I've made videos on in the past and they're always really controversial. I think people just don't, um, the whole tracing thing, I don't think people realize how much of that is really prevalent anyway. Um, they don't realize how many people, how many professional artists are using it. The professional artists, that's the thing, is I never have a problem with anybody that's a professional artist using that, that is extremely skilled, because really what they're doing is, they're producing the same work, they're just doing it way faster. And if you know how hard it is to make a living as an artist, you understand why efficiency is so important, especially nowadays, um, you know, automation, things like that. Uh, having said that though, some people will give you money when they know like, holy crap, this person spent a hundred hours on an illustration. Like there's a guy that I see all the time on TikTok that is super ultra realistic, um, like ultra realism drawings, and they must take forever, forever. Now I know for a fact that he's uh, tracing those. Um, that's why they're all based on photographs. And super ultra realism is extremely, I don't even know if you can do it. I don't know if there's any, maybe you guys know of some, any extreme realism illustrators that actually draw from their mind or draw without using tracing techniques. Um, I've seen a few that I've come across that have shown their, like them working kind of like I'm showing you guys here and they do very realistic stuff. Uh, but when you buy a painting or a drawing from that person, you know that they spent probably 100 to 200 hours on that illustration. And for some people, that's reason enough to support their art and that's totally awesome. So I'm really curious to, as to what you guys feel about that kind of stuff. It's always interesting for me to hear different takes, um, different opinions. I will say this, not everybody's opinion is equal in my mind. And I know that sounds a little elitist, um, but it's not at all. It just means that if I know somebody has spent a thousand hours, 10,000 hours perfecting a craft, um, their opinion matters to me more than someone who has uh, either not done that or spent far less time doing it, if that makes sense, because they might not know all the intricacies. I'm not saying some anybody can't have a great opinion on something. <clears throat> Just saying that, you know, there's value in knowledge and experience, I should say. Okay. It's kind of a cool looking sketch. What do you guys think? How'd that turn out? Not too bad. I really like the form of this thing, but you can kind of see how I just clumped shapes and stuff like that together. Uh, so yeah, anyway, 
Um, that's the video, guys. Hope you like this sketch. I might take this one a little bit further and I'll post it on the comment section or something like that or to my Instagram after I work on a little bit more. But I definitely like this one. Um, yeah. So anyway, have a good one, guys. Thanks for watching and I will catch you later.